Every day, roughly 20% of the world's population draws their drinking water from a karst aquifer. Even though many people are familiar with typical karst landforms, like caves, springs, and sinkholes, many have never heard the word karst before. And many people have no idea that because karst landscapes are so fragile, drinking water supplies are in continuous jeopardy, both from natural events like drought or flood, and human contamination. But what is karst? And why is it so important to our health, our economic well-being, and our quality of life? So karst is generally seen as the removal of carbonate rocks. Karst being characterized by things such as sinkholes, and caves, uh, the rapid movement of water through these carbonate rocks. Uh, so that makes it a very vulnerable environment, especially with a lot of people living on top of it. The major reason for that, of course, is where people are, there's pollution, and people tend to dump their pollution into the ground. Now, in a karst environment, with the removal of that, a lot of that rock, that pollution can get into the groundwater that people drink. It can also get into the aquifer, uh, which can create a long-term problem. And we also have issues with um, the biota, the organisms that live in this subterranean environment. Uh, Florida is entirely a karst landscape. Because Florida rests entirely on karst, the nearest karst landform is never more than a short drive away. There are literally hundreds of examples of pristine, unspoiled karst features in the Sunshine State, with at least as many that have been turned into makeshift trash dumps. These highly sensitive environments can be found in remote wilderness areas and densely populated urban settings. Karst features in cities face the greatest risk of pollution. We are here in Ocala near a Walmart. It's located right near downtown. There's actually a sinkhole just behind the Walmart that goes down probably 50 or 60 feet with a cave at the bottom. And so what we're gonna do is go out and take a look at some of the karst features that are located in an urbanized area of Florida. We're at the bottom of the sinkhole now, and as you can see, it's filled with trash. People have come down here and disturbed this whole sinkhole area quite a bit, and off to the right is actually a cave entrance. And there's a small amount of passage, and the trash actually is also inside the cave, so there's been quite a bit of disturbance, mostly because of its close proximity to the Walmart and the downtown area where there's a lot of urban development, and people were able to find it quite easily. We're now in the cave at the bottom of the sinkhole. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of trash deep inside, some carpet that I'm standing on, some bottles, some cans, quite a bit of other stuff that has been brought in here. People have likely lived in here, partied in here. And the bad thing about it is there's also water that flows in here. And as the water flows in here, any kind of trash or pollutant is going to pick up and bring with it down to the aquifer. And all together, it's just destruction of the cave uh, destroys the habitat here for any organisms that could be living inside the cave. It destroys the environment. And overall, it's just really ugly. This is actually someone's backyard in a residential neighborhood. And again, emphasizing the point that karst features can be found anywhere. They're not just found out in the middle of the forest or out in the middle of the countryside. This is actually right in the middle of downtown. And you can see the sinkhole has been heavily impacted, most likely because of its location. I'm sure if you tested the water quality here, you would find that the water quality is probably quite poor. And this sinkhole is basically just the surface expression of the aquifer down below us, flowing south down to the river where the drinking water is actually withdrawn for the city and all the people that live in it. So this is an odd place to find a spring. It looks more like a swimming pool. It does look more like a swimming pool, and as you can see behind me, there's actually a swimming pool back there, and it's a replacement for the spring, which used to be a place where you could swim. But research has actually shown that water quality has declined so much in the past due to all the urbanization and the development around the spring itself that swimming in here would actually be harmful to your health. And this spring is a great example to show how all this pollution from all the vehicles and some of the industry has actually caused the water quality to decline in the spring 
which has a run that goes to the river where water for drinking purposes is actually withdrawn for the people around here in this vicinity. Because karst landforms provide a direct connection between the surface and the groundwater, people living nearby can easily degrade their own water supplies without even knowing they're doing it. But even karst landforms off the beaten path are not completely safe from the impact of human activity. Water travels quickly through karst aquifers, which means that pollutants dumped into a sinkhole in an industrial urban area can make their way to a cave in the middle of the woods in a matter of hours. See now that we've made our way underground through the dry portion of the cave to the water table. The water table inside the cave is actually the expression of the aquifer. And you can see here that there's quite a bit of trash that's made its way down into the cave, both through the dry portion up top here, all the way down into the water. And there's a nice film on the water also. It's fairly nasty. And the problem is that people don't understand the interconnectedness between what happens on the surface, the activity, the pollution, the cars, the development, and what happens below ground. Eventually, all those processes on the surface, all that pollution will make its way down through the karst system to the aquifer, to the water table, which in turn affects the drinking water supply, the quality of the water, and also affects any kind of organisms that also live in here. The abundance of nearby karst features has enabled the University of South Florida to become a leading center of karst research. Uh, here in the university, uh, USF, we do quite a bit of work on climate change. Uh, we're interested in how secondary deposits within the caves can tell us about changes in climate over thousands of years. The other thing that we're also interested in is looking at human disturbance of karst environments. So we've created an index where we have measured the degree of human alteration of both the surface karst environments and the subterranean karst environments as well. We just don't look at Florida, uh, we look at Central America, we look at Europe, Southern Europe. Uh, so we have a broad uh, view of looking at karst. There are also researchers who look at um, the sinkholes, who look at policy aspects with regards to karst environments. We have some geoarchaeology going on. Researchers at USF are also working to advance karst science by assisting karst researchers across the globe with their own research. 2007 saw the rollout of the Karst Information Portal, a joint project of several academic and research organizations that is hosted by the USF Tampa Library. The goal of the Karst Information Portal is to locate and preserve difficult to find karst-related materials and make them freely available to karst researchers online. By doing this, the portal hopes to achieve two goals. First, to make it easier for karst scientists to keep up with the current research in order to reduce unnecessary duplication of research efforts. And second, to protect rare and unique karst manuscripts from disasters like library fires or floods. Over time, the university hopes to develop the portal into the go-to resource for karst researchers around the world. Since its unveiling, the portal has added over 4,000 items to its content collection and is adding more every week. If people had a better understanding of how interconnected the car system is, basically through research and other activities that we've done that shows how these activities affect the inside of the cave, then perhaps the water and all would be better protected. Karst water issues are critically important to a huge segment of the world's population, as many as a billion people. University of South Florida is at the forefront of research efforts intended to further our understanding of how karst works and what we can do to protect these vital resources.